Good afternoon and thank you for joining us today on uh, Weather Nation. I'm meteorologist David Neal. It's a uh, yeah, it's been a very complicated day today. We've had uh, rain into the eastern sections of the state of Texas that we knew about, and we were anticipating the flash flooding that would be occurring there. Yesterday, it already did so into the western part of the state. And we knew we had a hurricane out into the Pacific. Uh, wasn't really sure what kind of a player it was going to be in the role of the heavy rain into the southern United States and southeastern United States. But I want to show you, we go way down to the south. And this is an image from NOAA. And you're pulling moisture into the storm from the equatorial portion of the Pacific, right into the belt, pulling it into the storm. This is the CDO, the central dense overcast. This is where the cold cloud tops are. The thunderstorms that surround the eye of the hurricane, which is getting smaller and smaller. During the day today, Air Force Reconnaissance aircraft went out there early in the morning. They projected uh, a sea surface barometric pressure that was down to 880 millibars. That's as low as I've ever heard of. Once before uh, in my lifetime, I remember Typhoon Tip that was uh, right there into that area, but this is historic now. This is going to end up being one of those kind of systems. As you look at it uh, from up in space, it is about 120 miles offshore of Manzanilla, but moving northward, this is Puerto Vallarta, this small little bay here, Manzanilla to the south, Acapulco is even further to the south, Mazatlan is up here to the north. It is projected to turn to the right, and that is a mountainous area there. This is a place where historically hurricanes that make landfall in this region create mudslides, it is not uncommon for hurricanes to come in this time of the year. It is, but not uncommon for them to have hurricanes there just of this magnitude with those kind of winds. Uh, it's a it's a wind maker. You know, a lot of times the destruction, the devastation from a hurricane will come with the amount of rain that you get the rain and the surge of water that comes in uh, and the wind 100, 120 mile per hour wind structurally, a lot of new structures over the past 20 years or so with building codes, they can take that kind of wind, not 200, with gusts to 245. They had a flight level wind of 197 knots, 222 miles per hour uh, when they were flying out there. Another Recon aircraft is on its way out there to give us the latest, but right now this setup is such that the heavy amounts of rainfall coming into the eastern portions of the state of Texas, at last hour we had 879 millibars with 200 mile per hour winds sustained, not gusts, but sustained. There's the eye of the hurricane. It is projected now to move swiftly once it gets into the flow, the southwesterly flow. This line is Saturday evening, this same time. There's Texas. So you can see now at this point, it's no longer a big hurricane. It is projected to be less than a tropical storm. Even the mountainous area of Mexico is projected to tear this storm apart. Uh, first of all, when it makes landfall, no longer uh, will it be receiving the warmth of the Pacific Ocean. There's a belt here that uh, has a, 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 an area of temperatures that are well into the mid to upper 80s as far as that sea surface goes. And that's why this thing blew up, bombed out, as we call it. But that motion goes northward. And we're getting two different sources now of moisture coming in from the Pacific, from the Gulf of Mexico. Now, it sounds like on paper, it even looks like, you know, the worst case scenario. I can see a few areas here where this might actually help for portions of Texas with getting rid of the rainfall a little bit quicker than the forecast was without the Pacific storm involved. But we'll have to wait on the computer models to get a better handle. They were not anticipating an 880 millibar low to be about uh, 800 miles off to the south. So we'll see the developing low pressure center though that is forecast to be here during the day on Saturday. That might just bring an area of moisture a little bit closer to the coast. It's still going to be torrential feeding this storm from both the Pacific and the Gulf of Mexico. It'll be torrential rain, I-10 specifically, west east. Then as the storm, the low pressure center, and this is a non-tropical low being forecast, and you can see there's a front right there coming out of the bottom of it, a baroclinic low. So as it moves on to the east, again, the potential is there for heavy rain all along the Gulf Coast, the northern Gulf Coast, and a dry slot back to the west. We're Weather Nation. Stay with us. We have more to come.